So, hello everyone. I'm Xu Dong from UIUC. Uh, in this bug session, we have seen many interesting work on dealing with bugs in cloud systems. And in this presentation, I'm going to tell you that uh, the cloud management plan, the cloud control plan that manages this cloud system is equally important, if not more. Because bugs in those cloud control plan can break even correct cloud systems. I will also tell you how we combat this emerging problem. Modern data center infrastructures are managed by cluster management controllers. Taking Kubernetes, a, a popular cluster management system, as an example, Kubernetes manages almost everything in a cluster, including applications, services, networking, storage, and so on. And all its cluster management logic is encoded in controllers. There are controllers for managing data volumes, containers, and many other resources. For systems deployed on Kubernetes, they also need uh, controllers to manage their operations. As a concrete example, to deploy Cassandra, we will need a Cassandra controller to manage it. And of course, we need controllers to manage all the other deployed systems. And even for the uh, same application, there are multiple controller implementations available uh, deployed for different uh, de deployment scenarios. Today, thousands of uh, controllers are being developed by the Kubernetes community. If you are currently tweeting about OSDI, Twitter is probably also managed by some Kubernetes controller. Controllers implement uh, state reconciliation. In Kubernetes, the entire cluster state is represented as a set of objects. And every object represents an entity in a cluster, like a container, a volume, a node, or application. And all those objects are hosted in a logically centralized and highly consistent data store called ETCD. The end goal of each controller is to reconcile the current cluster state to measure the deserted state. And to do so, every controller continuously monitors a subset of the cluster state and updates the cluster state by creating, modifying, or deleting some objects. To give you a concrete example, consider a controller that manages Cassandra cluster on Kubernetes. The current cluster state contains two Cassandra replicas, each has one container attached with one data volume. To downscale this Cassandra cluster, we can specify a desert state that has only one replica. And to reconcile to this desert state, the Cassandra controller is going to delete one container and one volume. Clearly, Controller reliability is critical, but it is also challenging to implement uh, reliable controllers. These controllers run in highly uh, dynamic and distributed environments, where various faults like uh, node crash and network disruption can happen at any moment. It is also challenging to address concurrency, asynchrony, staleness, and so on. Actually, there is a bug in this Cassandra controller. If the controller crash after the first deletion, it will auto restart. But after restart, the controller starts to malfunction. It cannot do any useful reconciliation work and get stuck in loops. The volume will never be deleted due to this bug, which causes a resource leak and security issue. This bug was detected by our tool and has been fixed by the developers. And know that this is really a single bug example, and there are many other controller bugs which has different uh, and even more complex triggers. Because it is really difficult for developers to anticipate all kinds of faults and events when developing controllers. So to help developers detect controller bugs during development phase, we present SIEV, an automatic reliability testing tool for Kubernetes controllers. The key idea of SEAL to effectively trigger a bug is to perturb the controller's view of the cluster state. SEAL is highly useful. It tests unmodified controllers. It can also reliably reproduce detected bugs. And it's open source at GitHub. To date, SEAL has detected 46 series bugs in 10 popular Kubernetes controllers. These bugs lead to severe consequences, including system outage, data loss, security issues, and so on. We reported all the bugs, and so far, 35 were confirmed, and 22 are fixed. 
the developers appreciate the bugs we reported a lot and even send us swags. And this is how I get free t-shirts as a grad student. And I'm actually very vulnerable t-shirt today, as you can see. Testing controller is challenging because first, the controller bugs have sophisticated triggering conditions. Like the bug example I just presented, the only way to trigger it is to crush the controller after the first deletion. Crushing the controller with other timing will not expose the bug. Second, controller bugs usually do not directly lead to crushing symptom. Like here, Cassandra doesn't crush, but gets stuck in this undesired state. And finally, different controllers have different implementations and diverse functionality. If a tool, uh, if we want a tool to be applicable to many different controllers, we cannot assume too much on the controller's implementation. The key idea to effectively trigger controller bugs is perturbing the controller's view of the cluster state. More concretely, in Kubernetes, the cluster state is represented as objects in etcd. Every controller continuously monitors the cluster state and updates the cluster state by creating, modifying, or deleting objects. And every such operation advances the cluster state to a new state. So a successful reconciliation process can be represented as a sequence of cluster states, starting from the initial state, ending at the desired state. And we call such a successful reconciliation a reference run. The key here is that uh, a controller makes reconciliation decisions based on its view of the current cluster states. If the controller has a different view, it's going to take a different decision, which may trigger a controller bug. So, so it analyzes this reference run and produces a perturbed run by running the same reconciliation workload, but, in, but the perturbed controls the view at some point by injecting common and transient faults that the controller should tolerate. If a bug is triggered, we will end up having a different sequence in a perturbed run. And know that uh, triggering bug is not our end goal. So we also need to correctly flag the bug it triggered. To do so, so we use this differential oracle that compares the two runs to flag bugs. The differential oracle allows you to detect levelness and safety violations without knowing the semantic of state objects. An important levelness property here is that uh, a controller should eventually achieve the desired state. This can be checked by comparing the end state of the two runs. And this will tell you whether the controller in a perturbed run achieved the same final state as in the reference run. And the safety probably example can be a controller should never delete user data unless requested. This can be checked by comparing the state updates because any inconsistency in the number of volume deletions between the two runs will be captured. And there are also many other property examples C is able to detect in the evaluation. To implement the idea, C needs to interpose around the cluster state transition. The state-centric interface in modern cluster management system make it easy. Recall that in Kubernetes, the state is represented as objects in etcd. And the state-centric interface is used by the controller to read and write this object, such as getting or updating object in etcd. So you automatically instrument those interface to interpose around cluster state transition. And this interposition also allows you to test unmodified controllers. So you aims for detecting diverse controller bugs instead of focusing on one type. To do so, so it employs the three different perturbation patterns that inject different faults. And to systematically find all the targeted bugs, so we exhaustively test all the bug triggering perturbations. To do so, so we inject the faults with different timings. And to be efficient, so we prove out ineffective perturbations because not every perturbation can lead to a bug. And now, let me introduce the three perturbation patterns. The first one is intermediate state pattern. Controller runs reconciliation processes in cycles. And in every reconcile cycle, the controller typically issues multiple updates to the cluster state. Like in this example, the first creation advances the cluster state from S1 to S2, and the second update advances the state from S2 to S3. 
And similarly, the next reconcile cycle advances the cluster state to S5. There's no automaticity guarantee in these reconcile cycles. So once the cr controller crashes in the middle of a cycle, the controller has to start a new reconcile cycle from an intermediate state, such as S2 and S4 here. To test the weather controller correctly handle intermediate state, in the protrupter run, they will crush the controller in the middle of the reconcile cycle. And here, crushing between create and update will make the controller, force the controller to start a new reconcile cycle from S2, which is an intermediate state. And failing to do so is a serious bug. The bug I presented before is actually an intermediate state bug. Let's look at the code to see what exactly went wrong. The code I'm showing here is already highly simplified. The actual code spans more than 2,000 lines of Go code. This controller uses this phase variable to drive the reconciliation. And phase is actually a field of an application object as part of the cluster state. At the beginning, the phase is ongoing. So the controller deletes the container, updates phase to finalizing. And in the next reconcile cycle, the controller checks phase again. And this time it goes to the finalizing branch where it deletes the volume and update phase to down. This is how the controller reaches the final desert state in the reference run. However, in the perturbator run, it will crash the controller after it deletes the container, but before it updates the phase. So after restart, the controller gets stuck by this container not found error because the container was deleted by the controller itself before the crash. And the controller will never be able to execute this finalizing branch to delete the volume. And this is how a single crash breaks the controller's functionality. Intermediate state is actually the simplest pattern we are testing. The second pattern is a stale state. This is for testing whether the controller correctly handles staleness caused by asynchrony and caching. For performance reasons, Kubernetes controllers usually read the cluster state from a state cache instead of directly reading from the strongly consistent ETCD, and the cache can be stale. So to test the controller, they will first inject delay to make a backup cache stale, and later reconnect the controller to this stale cache to replicate the stale state in this stale cache in the controller's view. And this perturbation here replaces the stale state S1 in the controller's view. Seeing the, control, seeing the stale state, the controller should not do anything wrong. The third pattern, and also the last one, is the unobserved state pattern. Controller is supposed to function correctly without observing every single state. That is, as long as the controller can observe the current state, it's supposed to reach the final desired state. So to test the controller, they inject a delay to the controller to make it miss a particular state. Here, the controller misses S3 in its view, but it can still see the state after S3 and it's still supposed to reach the final desired state after that. To systematically force all the bugs to save, here's save the targets, save exhaustively generated perturbations for every pattern. The key principle here is to inject a force at each execution point to trigger as many bugs as possible. This means they will run many different tests, each performing a different perturbation. For intermediate state, they crush the controller after every state update. For stale state, they will replace every stale state in the controller's view. And for unobserved state, they will try to make the controller miss every single state in a different test run. But exhaustive perturbation can also lead to an excessive number of tests. And not all the perturbation is promising. So to be efficient, they will also point out ineffective perturbations. And the key here is to point out the perturbation that cannot possibly affect a controller's behavior. Taking intermediate state as an example, so points out the crashes that do not result in new intermediate state. Consider this reconcile cycle. If the controller is trying to delete a non-existing object, this deletion is not going to change the cluster state at all. So there's no point to crash after this deletion and still point out such crashes. Pruning for stale state and unobserved state is more complex. So reasons about causality from the state observed by the controller to the controller's effects on the cluster state and avoids perturbing any state if observing that state 
doesn't causally lead to any controller effect. Now let's put everything together and see the whole picture of how C works. So it takes the three inputs. First, the controller source code. Second, the build and deploy script for the controller. And third, the test workload, such as downscaling a customer cluster. So first, the instrument, the state-centric interface used by the controller, deploy it, and then run the test workload to produce a reference run. And from this reference run, so you generate many test plans. Every single test plan here describes a concrete perturbation. And for each test plan, so you produce a perturbed run by injecting force accordingly. It uses differential oracles to compare the two runs and output a list of test results for every perturbation. And know that uh, once a bug is triggered, the user can easily reproduce a bug by rerunning the same test plan. We evaluate SIU by applying it to turn popular Kubernetes controllers. SIU is effective in finding new controller bugs. It found in total 46 bugs in the turn controllers. SIU is also efficient. We measure the test run and the testing time. SIU pruned out 46 to 99% of the perturbations and can finish testing each controller with a nightly run. The false positive rate is also low at 3.5%. This table summarizes all the, bugs, all the new bugs found by SIEU. We apply SIEU to the 10 controllers for managing cloud systems like Cassandra, MongoDB, Zookeeper. All those controllers are developed either by the official development team of the corresponding system or by the companies that have production grade offerings around these systems. SIEU found bugs in every such controller. And in total, SIEU found 46 bugs. With the three perturbation patterns, so we found 37 bugs. And so we can reliably reproduce all the 37 bugs. The reproducibility is invaluable for understanding and debugging test failures in our experience. So we also detect the nine indirect bugs. These bugs are not directly triggered by the three perturbation patterns, but they are still correctly flagged by the differential oracles we use. We reported all the bugs to the developers. So far, 35 have been confirmed, and 22 have been fixed. To conclude, controller reliability is critical but challenging. These controllers manage your data center infrastructures, manage your cloud systems, and they help to safely drive the system to their desired state in the face of faults, network issues, concurrency stillness, and so on. We present SIEU, an automatic reliability testing tool for Kubernetes controllers. The key idea is to perturb the controller's view of the cluster state to effectively trigger bugs. SIEU is highly usable and can reliably reproduce bugs. It's open source and GitHub, and we encourage you to take a try to test your controller with SIEU. Thank you.